The following is a production of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. Downtown Los Angeles, the first Friday of the month. Brian Garcia makes a trip down from Victorville to get on the show. He's only 18 years old. Jonathan Thunder Navarro from a fighting family in East LA. He's the co feature tonight. And in his first time as a main event fighter, San Antonio Joshua Franco puts his perfect record on the line. Traffic is moving. That's easy on a Friday night. Joshua Franco, he's from San Antonio. He's not used to that traffic, but he is better get used to being a main event fighter the way he is going. He takes on veteran Victor Pasillas. That's the main event tonight in the super flyweight division. Co-feature Jonathan Thunder Navarro. That's actually Franco's stablemate with Robert Garcia out in Riverside. Takes on Angel Rodriguez. And opening up the card. Mr. Victorville, Ryan Garcia, 7-0. He takes on Devin Jones out of Louisiana. The first Friday of the month, that means it's the LA Fight Club at the Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles, blocks away from the headquarters of Golden Boy Promotions. A fantastic venue. If you're in Southern California, go and check it out. They, it's a, normally a nightclub, it's historic, but they put the ring in the middle and the people get going alongside a long time boxing scribe from UCN Live and BoxingScene.com, Steve Kim. I'm Bethel Durant. Thank you for joining us tonight. Ryan Garcia opens up the show for us from the Belasco Theater. And Steve, you saw Ryan in Inglewood when he made his first ever fight for Golden Boy. Yes, uh, beginning his Golden Boy debut was December 17th at the Great Western, still fabulous form. It was Ryan Garcia opening up in style, stopping. Jose Antonio Martinez and two. This much is known early on about this 18-year-old Garcia. He's fast, he's flashy. The question is, can he be fundamental? He is a precocious sort, began his career in Mexico. His first four bouts were south of the border as he worked things out and he got old enough to actually be licensed in California. I know Golden Boy has a lot of high hopes for him. They sure do. Mr. Victorville, Ryan Garcia. Victorville about, you know, You've seen it. It's on the way to Vegas. When you're going there, you're excited. On the way back, you're like, oh, man. That's the home of Ryan Garcia. Our nickel feature, Jonathan Navarro. Great nickname with Thunder. Thunder is an ode to the great Arturo Gatti, who was a fan-friendly television left hooker from the East Coast. And that's exactly what Navarro is. Just 20 years old with a record of 7-0. and zero. And this is a guy, he's hell-bent for leather. He's not going to outbox a lot of people. His job is to get people out of there with that laser left hook. Navarro trained by Robert Garcia, as is our main event, Joshua Franco. He comes from a fighting family. He's from San Antonio, the first one of those trio that Robert Garcia has that gets to be the main event fighter. Yes, he's now an eight-round fighter. He had five fights in 2016, winning them all. We see some of the highlights here from a recent fight. But we're really opened eyes with September at Cowboy Stadium, AT&T Stadium, on the Canelo undercard, scoring an eye-opening stoppage of Brian Bazan in what was a, an exciting back-and-forth affair. He's 8-0 with four stoppages. As always, we're very active on social media. Send us your tweets. I'm Durant Sports. Steve, you are? Steve, you see and live, and I'm known to tweet once in a while. Every now and then. Ryan mm -hmm. Garcia, he's very popular on social media. You can Google him. He'll get you all you need. He's actually giving away gloves. I mean, this mm. kid in his second ever fight from Golden Boy, I guess <laughs> Will Wright's paying him right because he's giving away <laughs> some gloves. He takes on a Devin Jones. They're going to be making their way towards the ring. Our ring announcer tonight is the one and only Joe Martinez. Also, go and check out the Golden Boy social media team. They're doing a great job at the Belasco Theater, all behind the scenes action. Check out their Snapchat, their Instagram, their Facebook, and when these fights are over, make sure you go to the Golden Boy YouTube page for more behind-the-scenes coverage throughout the week. And you can watch these fights over and over and over, which I'm learning now as talking to some of these fighters. I'm like, hey, do you ever study any video on your opponent? They're like, yeah. Actually, mm. we heard you guys because oh. they go to the Golden Boy library and they specifically hear Steve Kim. 
They said the guy who was critical. I'm like, that's Steve Kim. That's my job. It's <laughs> what I do. It's nothing personal here. No, it's not. It's not at all. We break it down. We have a good time with it. It'll be Ryan Garcia, Devin Jones, then Jonathan Navarro, Angel Rodriguez, Joshua Franco, Victor Pasillas. Now, explain to the fans who are watching this. The Belasco Theater is a club show, but this is where the kids graduate where they want to go to the next level. Right. I would really call this a developmental or farm system. A lot of the times when you see kids at the Forum or the Staples Center or specifically the Home Depot Center uh, on the major televised programs, they don't just suddenly get the 30-0, and 25-0. and They have to start somewhere. And this is now a rite of passage for every young fighter for the most part. Different promotional outlets have their own type of shows that are their farm system. And for Golden Boy, for the past two years, this has been the main hub. And, and we saw a graduate last year. A young man by the name of Joseph Diaz, who was a staple of the Belasco Theater, is now what I believe a legitimate 126-pound contender and has been on platforms like HBO and major pay-per-view shows. And that's the goal of every young fighter like Orion Garcia, projecting ahead to, let's say, 2019, 2020, to be on those stages. Well, if you read Ryan Garcia's article on UCN Live, he's not waiting to 2019. He was speaking with Mike Baca, <laughs> one of your fine young writers yes, at yes. Long Beach. Go and check out that article uh, featuring Ryan Garcia after a good workout at the media workout this weekend at the Azteca Gym. Ryan said, you know, I, I sparred Lomachenko, I sparred Linares, I'm ready, let's get going. This kid doesn't lack confidence. No, and, and you know, Fernando Vargas was ferocious. This young man is precocious, and you get the sense that if he was on the freeway, he would be all the way on the left-hand side on the fast lane. He wants to go places. I don't think he necessarily wants to be babysat or over-marinated, but again, this is a process. This is a six-round fight, still just seven fights into what hopefully is a long, distinguished run. Yeah, you mentioned his first fight, four fights, uh, actually first five fights, were uh, not on, with Golden Boy. The first four were in Tijuana, one at uh, another banquet hall. But this is different, though, because now you have a big crowd in front of you. It's here. And some of these younger fighters, when they have this record, Steve, they get to say, oh, yeah, I fought in Vegas in front of Bethel and Steve and well, nobody else. Yeah, that, that's one of the things. I talk to young managers all the time, and they say, Steve, we're so excited. We get to be on this big card. Uh, and then I say, really, uh, have you seen the bout sheet? They say, no. Well, you're all the way on the bottom, which means you're fighting at about 3.30. So I hope you impress the commission members who are ringside, because Beto, quite frankly, they're usually the only ones there. Yeah, that's when uh, they say, oh, doors open 3.30. First fight, 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> now you see the man from uh, Louisiana, Devin Jones. That's Ryan Garcia. You know you're dapper when you have a suit sponsor. This kid is 18 years old, and he you always see him in his social media or at press conferences always looking the part. He is sponsored by a suit company. That's the way to do it. You see his cut man in the back. Mike Rodriguez working. That's his dad, Henry Garcia, who is also his trainer out of Victorville. And Ryan is uh, taking his time, knowing that Steve and I have a lot of notes on him. <laughs> you know, one thing that's very evident about Garcia and seeing highlights of him, and I also saw him at that one club show back in Hollywood that you referenced back in about October. Very fast, a lot of speed. Uh, I do wonder about his chin. He seems to really stick it out there almost like a Pez dispenser. Uh, I think as you go along and you watch him, I think one of the teaching points that they're going to keep stressing, or at least I would hope they stress, is tucking in that chin. Uh, again, a lot of kids are flashing fast, but you have to be able to master the fundamentals. Anybody can be flashy when you're using Boomerang on Instagram. It's a different story when you get into the ring. What's up to Lamont Roach yeah, Jr.? Big win California last week in Indio. We'll talk more about right, Lamont. We're watching this right now. Here's Joe Six Martinez. rounds of boxing this in the lightweight division. Los tres jueces por el combate. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside. Rudy Varagan, Maximiliano De Luca, and David Mendoza. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Raul Caiz. 
presentaron primero la esquina azul con los pantaloncillos rojo con negro y un peso de 133 libras y tres cuartos. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks trimmed in black, he weighed officially 133 and three quarter pounds. Con un record de dos victorias, un por nocaut y una derrota, his professional record in three bouts stands at two victories, one defeat, one win coming by way of knockout from Alexandria, Louisiana. Here is Devon, the Hitman Jones. Y su oponente en la esquina roja, con los pantaloncillos blanco con azul y un peso de 133 libras y un cuarto. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Where's tonight? White trimmed in blue. He weighed it officially 133 and one quarter pound. Con un record perfecto de siete victorias. Cero derrotas y seis ganadas por no count. He stands perfect in seven bouts with seven victories. No defeats. Six wins by way of knockout from Victorville, California. The fighting pride of the high desert. Here is the undefeated Ryan King Roy Garcia. All right, gentlemen, you had your instructions downstairs. Keep your punches up. Punches here are fine. Watch your heads. Shake hands and good luck to both of you. Raul Cai Sr., the man in the ring. Look at Santa Monica Pierre. Look at the tail of the tape for this one, Steve. And one thing that sticks out once again, Ryan Garcia, the precocious young man from Victorville, just 18 years old. Devin Jones, a year shy of 30. It is Garcia, though, with a two-inch height advantage. Mentioned that Lamont Roach Jr. was watching out of the No Excuse Gym in Washington, D.C. He's actually at the National Silver Gloves with two of his young amateur fighters out of that gym in D.C. Thanks for watching. He won the WBC Youth Bell. Looking good, dude. Lamont Roach Jr. Also, Zungri, Zachary Ochoa watching us from Brooklyn, New York. And I guess he's breaking news like you, Steve. See you soon, March 11th. I guess he's fighting in New York. Yes, well, you know, uh, Zachary's certainly one of our more dedicated viewers, and uh, Lamont Road to a solid victory. Uh, scored a first-round knockout, I believe, with some body shots. Good, solid fighter, both of those young men. That March 11th show in New York will be Curtis Stevens and David Lemieux. The night before that, Christian Chipa Gonzalez will be at the Belasco. He is the main event fighter, an exciting kid out of Buena Park, a fighting family. He and his younger brother, Ande here, his father, trainer, brother of former world champion, Cobrita Gonzalez. You'll see Chimpa in the ring March 10th, and Chimpa actually sparred with Ryan Garcia. And as the good thing is, there's no video. You don't ever post your video on of you sparring, young people. But uh, you referred to what exactly is this program about? I remember about two years ago as this program began, I remember Chimpa Gonzalez making his debut, actually getting knocked down, looking much more like a suspect than a prospect. But we've literally seen him blossom in front of our eyes. That's what this program really intends to do, develop young fighters. Ryan Garcia, homeschooled in Victorville. His gym is in his garage. His dad, Henry, converted the garage into the gym. So they drive around Southern California for sparring. And Victor really mentioned it uh, two hours, hour and a half away from downtown Los Angeles, depending on traffic. His opponent, Devin Jones, two and one. Jones actually from Sacramento with the Fairfield High School. He was a standout CIF wrestler, went to state, married, moved to Louisiana where his wife is from. His wife, Crystal Jones, watching right now. He has three kids, two boys and a girl. He played football, he played basketball, ran track, was always into the sports. He is one and four as an MMA fighter. He's also done kickboxing. He is two and one in his boxing career. He said, because the money's better in boxing. Well, that was a good right hand. Good right hand. He catches Devin Jones in the southpaw stance. He's done a little bit of switch hitting. And you could see some of the explosive power and the twitchiness of Garcia early on. But again, that's the recklessness right there. I still think Garcia, as he scores a knockdown, needs to do a better job of, of making himself a little bit smaller at times and tucking in that chin. Seven, come here. Jones went down in the first round.
final seconds of the opening round. It is scheduled for six in our opening bout at the Belasco Theater, the LA Fight Club. First edition of the month of March or February. And Kai's gonna count that as a knockdown? Yes, he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right like at the belt. He is giving him the mandatory eight. So that'll make that a 10-7 round for young Ryan uh, Garcia. Cesar, 10 para esquina roja. Siete para esquina azul. And for those of you scoring at home in Espanol, siete, seven. Devin Jones, zero amateur fights. And uh, keep this in mind as he's taking instruction in the corner in his last fight, December 15th. He was stopped in two rounds. As we take a look at some of the action, and that was the right hand that I really buckled Devin Jones' knees. It really began some of the problems. And you see the exuberance, and perhaps over-exuberance of Ryan Garcia rushing it. And he has to be a little bit more mindful of the fact, in this game, Beto, they are allowed to hit back. I think that's going to be the thing. Early on in his career, he's going to face guys he'll be able to overmatch and swarm, uh, but I think he still has to mind his P's and Q's defensively. And there you see Devin Jones. He, Devin Jones in out of out of his class right now. He trains boxing for his MMA side. You can see the striking that he's doing. Ryan Garcia started boxing at the age of eight, went to a lot of that big time amateur tournaments, traveled all over the country for it. That's the reason he didn't go to high school because he was going to tournaments. It's hard to find him an opponent. Jones picked up this fight this Monday. Well, the best thing about MMA guys that do boxing is that they're really good at MMA usually. And you, you can see that the, the real big advantage in terms of Garcia, just the technique and command. He, he certainly looks like, you, and there's a good right hand, and you basically time Jones coming yep. in with that lead right hand. Walked right into that, but he did hit Garcia in the nose, did Devin Jones. You hear him, Royal Kai, one more knockdown and you're done. He's been down three times here early in the fight. Ryan Garcia in the white, and that is oh. it is over. Raul Calles Jr. Senior has stopped it. Ryan Garcia improves the 8-0 with seven KOs. The lights went out for that, Devin Jones. Well, Devin Jones kept rushing in, and Ryan Garcia just timed him off that back foot and threw lead right hands. And you can see the explosiveness of Ryan Garcia, who now improves to 8-0. and zero. He's certainly a prospect to look out for. It's interesting. He's a tall guy. I think improving upon his boxing skills and being a little bit more patient, that's the thing to look at. Remember, he's just 18 years old. The guy he is now, we're probably going to see a different physical being, and also technically at the age of 21. And you see that that was not exactly the cleanest right hand landed on Devin Jones, but I think Kaiz made a decision. This wasn't going to change anytime soon. Jones swinging crazy, as was Ryan Garcia. Say, if you want to know more about Ryan Garcia, go and check out that article by Mike Baca on UCN Live. Really long, lengthy article giving you a background on who Ryan Garcia is. Trained by his father, Henry Garcia. Henry actually from the Chicago area. Ryan told his uncle early on in his career, I want one of those belts. He saw the shiny belts. Well, how do I get it? He said, well, you got to fight. And that was, I believe, the third knockdown, which occurred right in the middle of round number two. And shortly thereafter, here is, I believe, the finishing punch that really ended things. And it was not the cleanest right hand. But, you know, let, let's face it. If a guy's 2-1 and one and been knocked down in his, or knocked out in his previous fight in two rounds, uh, as they say, the die is cast. And that was going to be one-way traffic in favor of Ryan Garcia. I, I think Garcia's the type of kid we're going to see a lot. He's if green, it, isn't he? he, he you know what? He, I mean, obviously, I don't, I'm not an expert. I don't know much, but last week we saw Virgil Ortiz, Cesar Diaz, and Louis Correa, 18 years old, the same contemporary as Ryan Garcia, and the way that they throw punches yeah. a lot smoother compared to what we saw well, from Ryan Garcia. What I see with Ryan Garcia is physical potential, but I see unrefined skill and technique. There, there's an old John Woodenism that I love. Be quick, but don't be in a hurry. At times, I get the sense for all the flash of Garcia, seems to be in a hurry. Uh, there's an old phrase, let the game come to you. Uh, I think that applies to this young man. There's a lot of physical potential, but I think like a wild colt, he has to be harnessed. You kind of have to take your time with yes. the way you bring him up also, right? right? Like a fighter like Ortiz, yeah. who could have gone to the Olympics. Yeah. That's one you rush a little bit more yeah. compared to Garcia. Looking good, Bill. 8-0, and 6-0. Victor, Mr. Victorville. As he said, everybody in Victorville knows him. His shirts are made by there. He, 
He's a celebrity in that town, sells a lot of tickets. Bright future for Ryan Garcia. He's got his own website, he's got his own shirts. He's a brand, baby, he's a brand. <laughs> you should think about this on your website. You should think about it at UCN Live. You gotta become a brand, Steve Kim. Let me get some replays of the knockdown. He knocked him down four times. You know, and as you look in between all the punches of Garcia, you see stuff that's happening in between. It might be a little bit subtle, but I mean, Jones is finding counter punching opportunities. And with all respect to Jones, that's enough proof to get in there. He's not exactly what I call a really skilled sharpshooter. Uh, I, I do see. Well, let's go up to Joe Martinez. Segundos del segundo asalto de referee para la pelea para el ganador por knockout. The end comes officially. 55 seconds, round number two. Your winner by KO victory and still undefeated, Victor Belzone, Ryan King Roy Garcia. Ryan Garcia knocked him down four times. Kai Senior stopped it. Ryan ate a couple punches, though, a little red in the nose. You know, you cover a lot of basketball. You know what it reminds me of? He was a basketball player. He's that young guy that could jump out the gym. He'll give you some highlight reel block shots and dunks. Doesn't actually have like a 15-footer. Um, it doesn't do a lot of the little things that, you know, basketball players are expected to do. Yep. That, that's what it reminds me of. But again, he's just 18 years old and he's going to have a lot of opportunities to develop. I believe Golden Boy is doing over 40 shows this year. Regular rotation at the Velasco Theater and Fantasy Springs. Uh, if you are Robert Diaz, you have to gauge one thing. Is he actually ready to handle a real professional? Well, we saw this earlier in the opening about David Mihada's 4-0 yeah. went up against Avinci Dixon, who's 7-15, yeah. and, yeah. and wore, yeah. got, had to work for it. got yeah. the victory, did Mihada. And here you see... Yeah. The, and again, you right there is, is, a, is a case where he hurts... Yep. Jones early, but he actually loses control of distance. And he's actually in harm's way. And, and control of distance is something that comes with seasoning. You got to keep working at it at the gym. And, and I'll keep harping on it. I don't want to sound repetitive, but his chin does seem up there uh, like a lantern in the night. Yep. Well, again, Devin Jones, zero amateur fights. Ryan Garcia has gone up against some of the best. He sparred Lomachenko, sparred Linares. According to him, he held his own. That's big step. He is now 8-0. Nico Valdez, babyface Nico. If you want to talk about somebody building a brand, now, oh. that kid in Miami, watch out, Pitbull. That is Mr. 305. <laughs> Belgium and Cuban. Nico Valdez, actually, he's going to have a fight soon in March. That is uh, Jonathan Navarro, Angel Rodriguez coming up next. Nico Valdez, we'll see you soon. Thanks for sending your tweet. Y also saludo a Paolo Andres, que nos está mirando en Barranquilla, Colombia, ahorita. Yes, we are on the call tonight. Gracias a todos los que están mirando en Sudamérica. Y a todos los que están mirando en México también. Also, thanks to everybody watching in Pomona. And if you went to Bishop Vermont High School or if you went to LMU alum like Marco Palayo, we appreciate you supporting us out in the Pomona area. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim. And yes, for those of you wondering, Steve Kim is wearing fancy shoes tonight it rained in la so that means <laughs> there's no chanclas for him man it's cold out there exactly geez. you got to wear shoes on a friday night coming up next jonathan thunder navarro against angel rodriguez and steve we mentioned that you see ryan garcia got done with the interview the golden boy prospects that they have at the age of 18 virgil ortiz luis Correa, who's still in high school yeah. uh caesar d is a kid from palmdale ryan garcia you add him hector tanahara who was scheduled to mm. fight tonight but he's only 20 his opponent came in overweight the young core stable for golden boy the future is bright you know a lot of these shows i don't know if people realize this as, as i go inside baseball they don't make money on these shows uh, these are really lost leaders but it is an investment into the future golden boy the last two two and a half years has really done a nice job of signing prospects and in this past weekend it was actually national letter of intent day. yeah and i believe golden boy has as deep a stable of young blue chip prospects uh, as any promotional company in the world and they've done a nice job of just gradually building them up and getting them on to the next stage. Another guy is Hanaro Gomez. If he could ever get yes. some discipline in his life, I, I think he's certainly a young man with upside. Gon Gomez is scheduled to fight on the 17th at the Belasco Theater. That Golden Boy will be at the Belasco again February 17th. As Dito Manzanares will be making his U.S. debut, a fighter who grew up in Tucson, also now lives in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. Golden Boy really high on him. 
he will be making his U.S. debut as he's the main event. Linus in Philadelphia, as always, appreciate you watching us. Send us your tweets, Durant Sports and Steve UCN Live. Just like Christina Zamora is watching us in the 626, watching the baby, feeding the baby, and watching the fights tonight. Mm. That is a dedicated uh, woman. Yes. Mother of the year. Yeah. Why not? Why not? So there's an opening bout is in the books. Ryan Garcia, a second round stoppage. Joshua Franco will be the main event. He takes on Victor Pasillas. One of the best things about following Steve Kim on Twitter is that he will tweet you about anything and everything. But when he gets into the news and notes, he is breaking news for you. News coming out of Golden Boy today, Canelo Chavez, if a fight is made, but now we know where we can go. Yes, it'll be at the T-Mobile Arena. We were there for the opening last May when Canelo took on Amir Khan. Uh, it was made official by everyone involved today. Golden Boy making the announcement. The press tour and the ticket prices will be announced soon, according to President Eric Gomez. Interesting sidelight to that fight. It was being reported, and I believe Chavez himself put it out on social media. He will be trained by Nacho Beristein, best known for working with the Marquez brothers. Uh, I'm just going to offer a very unsolicited opinion. Uh, I think it's a bad fit. Uh, for the most part, Nacho Beristein is known for working with technicians and counterpunchers. Chavez is none of that. It, it kind of reminds me of, and you'll appreciate this, you cover the Lakers. Remember when Mike D'Antoni came to the Lakers and he had Pau Gasol and uh -huh. Kobe? It's it uh -huh. just a bad fit. Mm -hmm. I think this is a bad fit. Uh, I think if you look at that fight at 164 and a half pounds, let's say everyone makes weight correctly. Chavez is going to win this fight not by being cute or technical, but by being more aggressive and enforcing his will and his size. Uh, that's generally not what type of strategy or the philosophy of Nacho Beristein. And Beristein, he keeps his camps in Mexico City, doesn't he? Yes. Like, there's no... Com condition you know freddie will go to philippines or anything like that yep. bear signs like, no, you're coming to the F. yeah Ooh. that's gonna be an interesting fight though and the question is on the afternoon of may 5th i think the weigh-in will be key when you have a situation if you just look at the facts chavez has not been a middleweight or that close to being 160 pounds since september of 2012 when he fought sergio martinez wow. for the most part he has been a light heavyweight in his last fight against dominic brish he came in at 167, I believe. He looked emaciated. And part of the agreement that we have for this fight, it is a catch weight of 164 and a half. Golden Boy uh, did negotiate the fact that, that, listen, they have the A side. One note here, though, according to Eric Gomez, there is no rehydration limit. So we might have a very, very big, robust version of Chavez come May 6th. And that'll be at the T-Mobile Arena and the fight week action as always you it's no longer let's get there saturday or even for the weigh-in starting tuesday the golden <laughs> boy will have something wednesday thursday and cinco de mayo in las vegas with two mexicans i'm just saying book a room now i mean right. get it now and one note i think everyone knows march 18th gennady golovkin defends his various middleweight belts against danny jacobs we just talked about the event on may 6th beto i really believe from what i've been told Things are looking very good. If Golovkin and Saul Alvarez both come out victorious, keep September open. I believe it's going to happen. Well, well, I got to check with the Miami football schedule first. We play Florida State that day, but we all have priorities. We all have jobs to do September 16th. But, you know, a lot of people ask me on Twitter, Steve, do you really believe that the two sides will come to an agreement? And do you think Canelo and Golden Boy will pull the trigger? Based on the knowledge that I have and my gut feel, the answer is C. Is that why you left the studio when the phone rang? There's a lot of reasons why <laughs> I, I answer the phone when the when, out and leave outside we the studio. We were talking. I mean, you're the first of all. You're the only guy who still uses the phone to talk. Yes. Everybody else just texts. You actually <laughs> got a lot. I'm like, okay. And you're like, hey, hey, hey. You did the whole like, oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on. Like, I, now I figured it out. All right, what else you got on those news and else, Steve? A couple of things. You know, uh, Mikey Garcia was very impressive yeah. last week on Showtime, blowing out Dejan Zlatikin and becoming a three-division world champion. I believe he's one of the best fighters in the world. Talking to his brother and trainer, Robert Garcia, the plan is to fight at least three times, hopefully four, but they believe that they are going to be fighting somewhere in Southern California in June. Beto, I, I thought Mikey Garcia was spectacular last uh, week. We, went, you, uh, we were in India for doing the international broadcast of the HBO show with Burchelt and Bandido Vargas. Yeah. 
got home and I saw that. And I know Twitter tells you what happened. You can see now the replays right away. But when you're sitting there watching it and you know what's going to happen yeah. and you still say, oh, yeah. that knockout, the first punch he landed, but yeah. the one that Mikey knocked him out with, that was, that's the punch of the year. It is. It, it, it is. It, I don't think, oh, that, yeah, uh, uh, good for you, Mikey. You're at uh, Radio Row in, uh, in Houston working the Super Bowl. Also, uh, let's go keep the tweets coming. Durant Sports and Steve UCN Live. Ryan Scalia, I hope I'm saying you're right. Oh, ready. one of the real experts. Love his work for UCN Live. One of the real sharp guys out there. Watching from the frozen tundra in Canada. <laughs> Ryan, we are frozen too. It's sprinkled here in Los Angeles today. Ooh. Steve is wearing shoes, so you Ooh. know. Low 60s. We Ooh. are in, uh, you know, we're, we're worried right now. But he makes a good point about Ryan Garcia, who got the second round stoppage. He's now 8-0 with seven KOs. Garcia and Golden Boy team got to make sure he doesn't try to sprint in a marathon. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one other note, uh, speaking of Golovkin and March 18th, Ryan Blue Chip Martin, a lightweight that we saw back yeah. in December, yeah. he will be opening up the pay-per-view broadcast from the Madison Square Garden March 18th. Now, a lot of people oh. are going to ask what happened to WBO Cruiserweight Champion Oleksandr Usyk, who many believe would be a part of that card. According to Tom K2 Loeffler, he will be performing on HBO in April. So keep that in mind, and as we always say, Check your local listings. Check your local listings. For those of you guys who don't know, that's when they used to send a TV guy to your house. I remember those. Yeah. Those were great. George, George Costanza, dad, used to get crazy <laughs> about that. <laughs> Beth Durant and Steve Kim, we're waiting for Jonathan Navarro and Angel Rodriguez to make their way to the ring. Rodriguez out of Houston, Texas. Navarro, East Los Angeles, now living in the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy in Riverside. Uh, what, there you see Tattoo. And our main event tonight will be Joshua Franco taking on Victor Pasillas. Franco in the first main event of his young career. He's 21 from San Antonio, Texas. He has a 17-year-old brother named Bam Rodriguez, who just recently signed with Taken Promotions. Yeah. He's going to make his debut March 4th in Mexico City. Yeah, and it's interesting. There is a growing trend of smaller weight fighters actually signing with the Honorable Mr. Honda, where there's a lot more business for the smaller fighters now. Taking a look at Franco, I referenced this earlier. Beto, we were there early on for the Canelo William Smith card. Yeah. Uh, I thought Franco opened some eyes against Brian Bazan. He got buzzed, it was back and forth action. But he finished with a kick I had not seen before with the uppercut. And I think he really stamped himself as a prospect to look out for. Without a doubt. He's, he doesn't speak much. His nickname is a professor because he walked in the first day at Robert Garcia wearing a sweater and glasses. And they said, who's this guy? <laughs> you ain't a fighter. He started sparring. And like, okay, yeah, you are. Also looking at the, the – so here's the schedule for Golden Boy. The 17th, back at the Belasco Theater. March 10th. Chimpa Gonzalez, main event. His younger brother, Ade here, the pride of Buena Park High School, good amateur, 10th grade. I think my favorite follow on Snapchat. He will be in attendance, and he, uh, Chimpa will be the main event. And then March 23rd, Jason Quigley from Donegal, Ireland, takes on Glen Tapia. That'll be the first ESPN Golden Boy show together. And quickly, the main event taking a step up in competition. Yeah, Glenn Tapia, the question is how much is left in the tank? I'll be honest. I, I, what we saw against David Lemieux last oh. year, I thought was a little bit alarming. Uh, I don't know how much of Glenn Tapia, the one that we saw as a bright young prospect under the top rank banner in, let's say, 2009, 10, 11, and 12, really exists anymore. And you take a look at that schedule that you just listed, Beto, Talking to Robert Diaz, he's got to find a spot now for Diego De La Hoya, who was part of that February 25th card that has gone to Bolivian with the cut or the broken nose suffered by James Kirkland. And now Miguel Cotto has to look for a new dance partner. And also he needs to find a date for Hector Tanahara, who is yes. scheduled to fight tonight. Uh, his opponent came in overweight for those of you watching in San Antonio, Texas. This is what you call professional field. We've gone through Steve Kim's news and notes. Well, we're stretching. We're Willie McCovey. We, we are <laughs> stretching. Uh, Will Wright leading the way. David and Scott Tate Tro, Executive Vice President and Vice President of Golden Boy Media and Communications. We are broadcasting from downtown Los Angeles. And there you see Art with the Dodger hat. That means there's a fighter coming their way. You see a referee. That is Jack Race. That is Mr. 805, Mr. Ventura jumping in. So it looks like the fighters are going to be making their way towards them. Yeah, um, Beto, we were there last week in Fantasy Springs. You had a much better seat than I did. The press row was actually behind the crowd. But 
I have to tell you, Francisco Vargas, boy, this guy has been an absolute soldier. Didn't he look a little bit hollowed out, like the, the rough terrain had really gotten to him? You, got, you and uh, Doug Fisher have taught me that fighters can get old in the ring. And yeah. I don't have an expert opinion, but I had an eye, and it just looked like in the eighth round, Vargas was coming back a little bit. His body was telling him, his arms were telling him, but he had no, no legs. legs. And once the legs go, every, shot. everything else falls apart. It, it almost looked like marshmallows bouncing off a battleship. It seemed like Burkell just got bigger and stronger as the night went on. And Burkell, a fighter, only one loss. I think you tweeted it. You can't judge a fighter yeah. when you get knocked down in the first round because he got caught cold. Yeah. But now he's a world champion. And there you see Jonathan Navarro, Thunder Navarro. From East LA, 20 years old, from a fighting Navarro clan. I think, I think Doug Fisher said he saw him when he was seven years old at a gym. The LA Boxing Club, which used to be the hot spot with guys like Hanaro Hernandez, God rest his soul. Chiganito? And, yes, Sugar wow. Shane Mosley. And in fact, his brother, Jose Navarro, who had a bit of a disappointing professional run, the Golden Southpaw. He has a trivia question. He is the last American amateur to beat Floyd Mayweather. Uh, back in the mid 90s, really? yes, and then Carlos Navarro was a part of the 2000 U.S. Olympic team, a very crafty left-handed southpaw who had a pretty good professional run. His opponent, Angel Rodriguez, five, six, and three, out of Houston, Texas. Martinez boxing there, who's coming out of. Look at some highlights of uh, Thunder Navarro. And again, he, this you moniker know, is in honor of Arturo Gatti, but right, let's go, go to Joe Martinez, right? Six now. rounds of boxing this in the super lightweight division. Los tres veces otra vez. Once again, your three judges scoring at ringside. Rudy Barragan, Max Deluca, and David Mendoza. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jack Briggs. Presentar primero la esquina azul con los pantalones rojos y un peso de 139 libras y medias. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing solid red trunks tonight. He weighed it officially 139 and one half pounds. Con un record de cinco victorias, seis derrotas, tres empates y cuatro ganadas por knockout. His professional record, five victories, including four knockouts, six defeats, and three bouts even from Houston, Texas. Texas, here is Ankil Rodriguez. Y sobre de la esquina roja, con los pantalones y dorado, con blanco y negro, y un peso de 139 libras y medias. His opponent across the ring, finding out of the red corner, wears the night gold, trimmed in white and black, and he too weighed in officially 139 and one half pounds. Con un record perfecto, con siete victorias, cero derrotas y cinco ganadas por knockout. He stands perfect in seven bouts with seven victories, no defeat. Five big wins coming by way of knockout from East Los Angeles, California. Here is the undefeated Jonathan Thunder Navarro. Gentlemen, both trunks are good, mouthpiece. He's got his. Listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, but fight clean. Good luck to both of you. Look at the tail of the tape, Steve. And the one thing that really jumps out is Angel Rodriguez, 35 years old, certainly a grizzled veteran, although he doesn't have that many fights. Everything else relatively equal. Navarro, just 20 years old. Beth Durant, Steve Kim, keep the tweets coming. As Jonathan Navarro out of Robert Garcia Boxing Academy, the Riverside function. Obviously, Robert, well known in the Ventura area, also has a gym now in Riverside, and mostly run by Pita Garcia. Yeah, but who wants a shout out? Pita, there it is. Shout out. Pita in Philadelphia <laughs> with one of the other fighters. It seems like Robert Garcia has 100 fighters to make sure they all go to Pita Fitness to get their workout in. Navarro in the gold, real polished amateur. He's only 20 years old, turned pro in 2015.
for the first round KO. He's seven and zero, five KOs, and just talking to some of the fighters that he sparred against in his past, or knowing from the amateurs, they said that name Thunder is appropriate because he hits hard. And he makes no pretenses about his style. He's going to dig and plant his feet, and he's going to punch hard. I don't think he's going to finesse his way through a lot of fights. His fights are going to be very rough, tough, and physical. And early on, he's setting the tone here against Rodriguez. Angel Rodriguez, living in Houston, Texas, turned pro in 2006. But this is the first time he's in the ring since 2012. Journeyman fighter, yeah. <laughs> and he's back in there. Uh, he might have so much ring rust, he might have WD-40 in the corner. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what was going on there, but uh, generally it's not a good idea to take off about four or five rounds. I think Houston, we have a problem because he's getting hurt and hit very cleanly here in round number one. Stefan Friedman, PR extraordinaire. If you need some politics and boxing, he would do both. Business to work in boxing yeah, and politics. Yeah. Watching right now in the 3 one He's watching Jonathan Amaro lay some hands on Angel Rodriguez in the opening round. It is scheduled for six. Rodriguez already breathing heavy. But Rodriguez able to land a couple of jabs. Good one, too. This is a great style for Navarro. Because look, one thing noticeable about Rodriguez, forgetting the long layoff, he doesn't really have much of a jab. So Navarro's able to step inside that hit zone, reach that airspace. I think what's going to give Navarro a lot of problems, they're going to have to work on is dealing with boxers. They're going to be able to, really from the front side, with let's say a right-handed fighter, a guy with long jabs, they're going to be able to keep him at a distance. Those are the guys I believe are going to trouble Navarro in the future. 30 seconds to go in the opening round. Jonathan Navarro, as far as Mike Garcia. You mentioned the family's uncle Carlos Jose Refugio and Ignacio. His right hand landed by Navarro, followed by a jab. Doesn't speak much, lets his hands do the speaking for him. Good opening round between Jonathan Navarro and Angel Rodriguez, who's Shaking off some of that rust, like, okay, I, get, I got hit, let me now with you, kid. Beto, I and stares give, at him, all right. I gotta give him credit, I thought the last 30 seconds, he started to find his sea roja. leg, he started to counterpunch effectively against Navarro. Take a look at some of the action, and this was the last part of round number one when Rodriguez started to feel a little bit more comfortable. And this will be the story for Navarro. We know he's a very offensively inclined fighter. Can he close up some of the deep some defensive holes in his game? And as always on Twitter, everybody likes to correct you. As Caesar is doing it, he's going to let me know that RGBA is Oxnard. I know that. And I say it in Ventura County. Yeah, and, and Doug Ever, the editor, points out it was Jose Navarro that was the Olympian. Carlos is the one that beat Mayweather. As Petro Zabani was saying, news and retractions. We understand. <laughs> we get it. We are on the fly. But see what we're doing? We are held accountable. <laughs> we low and we hey, love hey, it. Thank no, you for watching. No fake news here. No fake news here. No, 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 no. You're 805. It's Francisco Salazar who is checking it out. All kinds of facts right here on Ring TV Live. You see Jonathan Navarro in the gold. You mentioned he's the kid who doesn't talk. He's not going to promote himself. His social medias are mostly private. He just said he's, that's not his style, unlike other people. He just comes out to box. He likes living out in Riverside now, Riverside County, because he owns two horses. That's his way of being calm. And when you grow up in the East L.A. area, it's not much area for you to ride your horse. Get some peace out there. Robert Garcia with that academy in Riverside. He has Navarro, Jonathan Franco, Hector Tanahara, and essentially these young kids, that's their college. That's their dorm life. They didn't go to school, but that's what they're doing right now. And they wake up, they run the hills together. They go to eat together, they train together, they spar together, 
and they're growing up and they're a team right now. And you do see and you get that sense of them. And that's why all three of them are on the card tonight. And you can see in this particular round, Navarro's a little bit more patient, working his way in, trying to close the gap. I get the sense he's been told by Robert Garcia, break the body down and eventually the hands will fall. I want to say one thing about Rodriguez, despite the modest record, is again, he gets hit with a two-punch combination. On his record, notable names like Diego Magdaleno, Adrian Broner, and Casey Ramos. He's a pretty seasoned guy. A long time ago, but he's been in there. And this is more with the matchmaking from Robert Diaz and Javier Raza, where you got to take these kids who are 7-0. If you feel like they're ready, put them up yeah. against these grown men. Yeah, and one thing we have to know, and you, we didn't speak about the age, he's only 20 years old. I would say for the most part, most fighters are not really, I think, ready and able to defend and win a title probably until their mid-20s. We have your prodigies like De La Hoya and Mayweather, who I believe won titles very early on before their 15th pro fight. Most kids are not going to be at that level that quickly. Fernando Vargas, 21, right? Yeah. In fact, Fernando Vargas in 1998, I think he beat Yori Boy Campos. I believe at the point, he was the youngest junior middleweight belt holder in the history of boxing. Second round is scheduled for six. Velasco Theater, the LA Fight Club, the first Friday of the month. Always a jam-packed crowd. They're watching Navarro and Rodriguez going at it. Ooh. And again, you see again, Navarro is not exactly Pernell Whitaker in there. He's not the most Cesar elusive Pies guy. Is and that's what they're really going to have to focus in on is the defensive aspect of his arsenal. Yeah, just a little bit, but that's okay, okay, because you're getting the better shots right now. Some of the action from round number two. Much more patient round, but again, Rodriguez finishing the round with the flourish uh, as he's able to land that combination right to the kisser of Jonathan Navarro. Fuerte being strong, throw combinations two, three, four at a time. Emilio Sanchez, Golden Boy fighter, watching us in the A1A in San Fernando, the pride of Quema. He went to San Fernando High School. His younger brother, Sal Sanchez, mentioned earlier, opening up the show March 23rd at the Fancy Springs Resort and Casino. The Golden Boy work with ESPN. The first show will be brought to you from the Coachella Valley. Sal Sanchez is also, he's 2-0, a young, nice-looking fighter. He fights at 115 pounds. Right now, Jonathan Navarro in the gold, he weighed 139, as did Angel Rodriguez. Mentioned Rodriguez hasn't fought since 2012. And you said it, he did that WD-40, yeah. shook it off after a couple. You know, honestly, he's been steady. He's certainly a strong-looking guy. He's got a nice, thick base to him. The punches don't affect him all that much. He's hurt a little bit, he's stunned, but you know, he's not brought back on his heels. And he's providing some pretty good work here. And, and he's been able to be sneaky with his counter puncher, and, and he's been able to catch Navarro a couple times. Navarro, I'd say, is getting a pretty good night's work here from Rodriguez. So when you see these guys regularly, wait, they haven't fought in how many years? But then you see who they win up against, you know, the quality of opponents? Well, I'm always fascinated when guys have uh, layoffs of more than a year because generally it's a couple of things. Either they're injured, they get bored of the sport, or they uh -huh, go on vacation. And they have a uh -huh, management problems. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, oh, I have manager problems. Well, who's your manager? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, vacations are always good. I like using sabbatical. As Jonathan Navarro landed some good shots here in the third, halfway through the third round. He goes with that hook. He really goes no, after it. You really could see him putting all that pressure and weight on that front foot. And he's not making any attempt to hide what he's doing. He is a left hooker. Uh, what we're seeing tonight, if you project ahead against better opponents, Jonathan Navarro is going to be involved in a lot of good back-and-forth television fan-friendly fights. That, I think, is going to be his identity as a fighter. Last time Navarro was in the ring was in September in Fancy Springs when he took on Farkad Sharipov. A tough fighter from Florida who took that fight because he had an MMA uh, world championship coming up 
He's like, I needed to get the rounds in boxing, and he really gave yeah. Navarro a good amount of work. He went the distance six rounds. Navarro swept the card, but that was another fight where he was fighting a grown yeah. man. Before that, he had knocked out four in a row. Step up in competition and realize these uh, these grown men are thicker and they don't yeah. they don't wilt the way some of these younger fighters do. Yeah, the way I would describe Rodriguez is very sturdy, and I think Navarro would be very well served just to dig downstairs like, like that like again. That. Double up that hook downstairs. Uh, really be patient. Try to chip away at this guy. That was the first time in four years that Rodriguez is trying to make weight. Oh, good shot landed by Rodriguez at the end of the bell. And we see some of the action from round number three, and you see Navarro, two-fisted attack. This is basically what he is. He may be well served to actually invest a little bit more down to the body, but Rodriguez has been game, and he's been sneaky, landing his share of punches, usually at the end of rounds. Let's go, Byron, let's go. Bethel Durant, Steve Kim, keep those tweets coming using Durant Sports or Steve UCN Live. Watching Jonathan Navarro in the gold with silver and Angel Rodriguez, man out of Houston in Rockets Red. You know, for this round, I would just like to see Navarro close the gap, get right in on his chest of Rodriguez and just really go downstairs. Make a concerted effort to see if you can really break this guy downstairs and then eventually work your way up. Work that body. You know, that's, that's an old phrase. Work the body, kill the body, the head will fall. Fourth round in a schedule for six. Super lightweight division. Hector Tanahara Jr. was scheduled to be in this slot as the opponent came in overweight. Unable to make an agreement that fight was scrapped. Navarro gets to be the co-feature tonight. Good one-two. Went to the body, went upstairs. In relation to Tanaharo, when your opponent weighs in seven pounds over, it's generally almost impossible to make a deal. You make a deal, and then the commission's <laughs> going to say no. Yeah, well, generally there are rules that if you weigh in over by, let's say, a pound or three, you can work with that. Yeah. By a whole weight class, you're not even allowed to cut a deal, is my understanding. You get the two hours to try to lose it, and after that, come on. Well, last week at Fantasy Springs, you were supposed to call the return of Toriano Johnson. Yep. He didn't make weight, and his opponent, Antonio Gutierrez, literally turned down an offer to take all of Toriano Johnson's purse, which would have eventually totaled up to $40,000, and he walked away. And nobody gets paid when there's yeah. no fight. Jab from Rodriguez. Pace is slow down here in the fourth. This is Navarro methodical with his approach. He's never been one, like we saw Ryan Garfield earlier, coming out just that wild yeah. coat and just trying to knock it out in eight seconds. Yeah, nope. his, his pace and his attack is going to be much more methodical, I believe. And keep this in mind about Rodriguez. One of the things that I've been taught from matchmakers is never mind just the record. You've got to be able to look past the record. In 14 professional outings with Rodriguez, He's only been stopped once, so generally he is a very durable guy inside that ring. He's going to teach you lessons as a young fighter, what you can and what you can't do, your mistakes, how to get corrected. Ten seconds to go in the fourth round. L.A. Fight Club, the Belasco Theater, downtown Los Angeles.
César, 10 para Esquina Roja. Some of the body work by Thunder yeah. Navarro. Look at me. You gotta let the everything you got in body attack right hasn't really stuck to it. You gotta keep You've been able to control most of the action. He has the faster hands and the cleaner technique. But certainly, uh, Angel Rodriguez has been very okay. game here. First fight in five years. It is the fifth round. I don't know where the corners got six, but it is the fifth round. So forget about the advice about letting it all go and let it hang out, Angel Rodriguez. Jonathan Morrow, Angel Rodriguez. And 140, tomorrow doing work with Mikey Garcia. I mean, what better work can you get? Well, Beto, I really believe that's one of the benefits of being with a brand name trainer like Robert Garcia, who has a deep, talented stable of world class fighters, is that every day you're going to be able to work with a world class fighter and also get great work in the gym. There's going to be a lot of humbling days, but I think Navarro's still at that stage where I think a lot of these sparring sessions are probably tougher than a lot of the live bullets he's facing. The shot landed by Navarro. How many combinations the last few rounds as we saw in the first couple? The redness around the right eye of the undefeated Navarro. Oh, really it doesn't look like he hit much rust on him right after that first round. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. He's even taking the punches better. And fighters will tell you that have really laid off a long time. We have to relearn how to get hit. And relearn how to get yes, hit. It's one thing to be in the gym and you could spar hundreds of rounds of headgear, 816, 18 ounce gloves. Uh, but you have to understand, a fight like this, I believe that they are using eight ounce gloves with no headgear. That is a whole different ballgame. And that right hand was a whole different ballgame. Best shot of the night landed by Jonathan Navarro. Overhand right. Another good right. Right landed by Rodriguez, one of his own. And Navarro has no problem staying there with you, willing to trade. Navarro is going to be a hit and be hit fighter. Conditioning is going to be absolutely paramount to his style and his success in the future. Under that beat up fitness out there in Riverside. Angel Rodriguez, Houston, Texas, got that rocket red on. Super Bowl will be there this weekend. Steve Razo is watching us right now at work. I mean, no, 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 he's not at work. Watching on his computer as he, the sweet that he sends. No, 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 no. He's not at work with Doc Bill watching right now. No, 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 no. He's at home. We appreciate you, Steve Razo. He watches every single broadcast. Along with Linus in Philadelphia. Our security blanket. Oh, without him. The city of brotherly love. Go I, Villanova. I sent him messages asking for fighter information. Like, he's a research book. Good round for Jonathan Navarro coming in. Work been life. I think that's the best way to put it. What well, hasn't been spectacular, hasn't been sensational, uh, but I think this has been a valuable lesson tonight through five rounds for Mr. Navarro. Yes, Esquina Roja. Some of the action from round number five, and that was a very steady three minutes from Navarro. And uh, looking at the scorecard, I think it's pretty easy to say 
more to feel that Navarro is up. Probably five rounds to nothing. It's going to take a really huge finish for Rodriguez to turn this around. He's actually fought pretty well for a guy that's been out for more than five years. And a man like Rodriguez tonight earns himself another fight with the young prospect. Yeah. And I think there's going to be some manager might say, you know what, nah, man, we might pass on him. Yeah. Because this dude looks tough. Sixth and final round of the co-feature tonight, working our way towards Joshua Franco and Victor Pasillas. Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Beth Grant, Steve Kim. as 20-year-old Jonathan Navarro, undefeated, 7-0 with five KOs. Going up against his most seasoned opponent in Angel Rodriguez. Five, six, and three. Betsy, you make a great point about Rodriguez, and, and I think at the six and eight round level, Rodriguez is a valuable guy. Not only really the, the amount of fights, and one thing the managers and matchmakers will look at in terms of pulling the trigger on certain guys, they'll also look at that column all the way on the left side for knockouts. And in 14 bouts, he only has four stoppages, which means you're not going to be necessarily facing a puncher, but you're going to get this type of work. And I, I think. Thunder Navarro learned a few things here tonight. Uh, as he, I don't know if he's cruising his way to a victory, but he certainly had to put in an honest night's work. He had to put in everything that he's learned at RGBA and Riverside into the ring tonight. A little mouse underneath the right eye of Angel Rodriguez. Let him out, let him out. We got Body work, good dig. Haven't seen much of that. Or as much as Robert Garcia would have liked. Yeah. Good right hand by Navarro, worn by Rodriguez. He's got a chin on him. That's that veteran move, though, right? Yeah. You get a hit and you throw that elbow. Yeah. Cool. And you go, you come back with one-two of your own. And look at that. Look at that counter-punching yeah. by Rodriguez. Rodriguez in pockets has been very, very sneaky here. Navarro now facing some two-way traffic. You know, you think about it, it's probably 5 nothing, Beto. He might be better off just laying behind the jab, and, and I don't want to say going to a 4 quarters, but be a little bit more conservative and put this 8th victory in the bank. You know what, Beto? This is what he is. Navarro is going to be a guy. He is going to take leather to give leather. This is his ring identity. Good for the fans, because they're going to see action. Great for the fans, not good for his face. It'll probably give his trainers a heart attack once in a while. Big one, two. Sixth and final round. He gets other opponents that hook. Yeah. He's been able to connect it. Yeah. Not only connected, when he lands, he's also able to get guys out of there. And that's one of the real calling cards of, of advancing up the ladder. You know, people say, where'd the power go when fighters stop scoring quick stoppages? I, I think it has nothing to do with that. When you're facing sturdier, higher caliber fighters, it's harder to score highlight reel knockouts. And that'll do it. They go the distance. Good fight between Jonathan Navarro and Angel Rodriguez. He's happy. Being back in the ring for the first time in four and a half years. You know, for a guy that hasn't been there since, what, at least the presidential election, I, I thought he showed some really good stuff in there. Very respectable uh, performance. And I think Navarro certainly got pushed. And as he looks back on this tape, I think there's going to be a lot of teaching moments from him, specifically defensively, understanding sometimes you've got to bring your hands back in better defensive position and also do it much quicker. And there was a good right hand right there, Beto, that you spoke about earlier. And Rodriguez showing really good set of whiskers here. And then uh, you talk about the sneakiness of Rodriguez. Pockets of success as Navarro fell asleep at the wheel at certain points. Something that Robert Garcia, I'm sure, is going to make a point of emphasis moving forward. Judges putting the cards together. And Beto, my highly unofficial and unimportant scorecard, I have it 6-0, 60 to 54. But as I said earlier, that doesn't tell the whole story. I do think this was a pretty night, pretty tough night at the office for young Mr. Navarro. And our man, Ricardo Celis, great boxing play-by-play -play man, 
Of course, a lot of the play-by-play -play or pay-per-views in Las Vegas. He's just sent me a picture. He's in Houston for the Super Bowl at a sports bar where they have the Rockets game on. He's watching ring TV. There, there's a man with proper sense of priorities. Gracias, Ricardo. He, along with Bernie uh, Osuna and Lupe Contreras, for years were on the solo book sale Friday nights all over Texas, and they saw some of the young up-and-comers. Great job. Thank you, Ricardo. Felicidades. Que están en su petazón en Houston. They'll be calling that game for Spanish radio. And Ricardo actually came down to uh, the Rock Jim McCarson. Started hitting the heavy bag and looked around. He's like, wait, there's a lot of sparring going on. <laughs> you had the Irish with Mick Conlon. You had Quigley and Liam Smith going yeah. at it today. Good work down there. But yeah, then, Michael Conlon, a very highly regarded Irish yep. Olympian, will be making his professional debut March 17th at the small room at Madison Square Garden. A lot of high hope for him. And you'll be there for that, right? Yes, I will be. And Joe Martinez will be with you in a few seconds. They were counting him down. That is the night before Triple G and Danny Jacobs. Yeah, that weekend's going to be big. I'm calling it Boxing Palooza. Boxing Palooza. 2017. Get your tickets now. And then you have an Irishman fighting on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, uh, load up on the Guinness. Tell everyone around there, all the local pubs. Well, it's Doug Fisher who's watching at home in Inglewood right now. <laughs> That's taught me. Always load up on yes, the Guinness. Yes, always. Always. <laughs> And now, fine fans, we go to the judges' scorecards. Los señores Max De Luca y David Mendoza notaron el mismo 60-54. De Luca and Mendoza have it scored the same 60 to 54. Y el juez Rudy Barragan anotó 59-55. Barragan has it 59-55. For your winner by unanimous decision, el ganador por decisión unánime se mantiene invicto and still undefeated. Jonathan Thunder Navarro. He went the distance against a good, tough opponent. Jonathan Navarro sweeps the cards. He's now 8 and 0 oh for the 20 year old from East LA representing Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. So beat the Garcia in Philadelphia. So you didn't even have to be here. Navarro gets the job done for you tonight. Yeah, good, solid action, good, solid work. Six round, and I think by the end of the year, he's going to be an eight round fighter according to matchmaker Robert Diaz, who got some valuable experience against the game, rugged, and durable Angel Rodriguez. And Beto, if there are some minuses that Robert Garcia is going to look at as he reviews this tape, offensively, we know what Navarro is. Two-fisted attack, very aggressive, likes to fight off that front foot, not afraid to stick his nose into a pile. However, there were segments when defensively he did not always adhere to some of the basic fundamentals and he was caught. But good solid work and he moves to 8 and 0. And I'm sure within six to eight weeks we'll be seeing Navarro once again, probably back here at the Velasco Theater. But these are the kind of fights though when yeah. you're a matchmaker, you put him up against a man like Rodriguez for a reason. You want to see how they do it because if they struggle, yeah. then you know you have to know which was going to be the next step with him, right? You know, I still remember when Oscar De La Hoya was a very young prospect coming out of the 92 Olympics before he won his first world title. Uh, I remember two guys by the name of Giorgio Campanella and Narciso Valenzuela knocked De La Hoya down. And people started panicking. Uh, but again, the road to a title or to full development oftentimes, Beto, can be a bumpy one. You got to go through those bumps and bruises to get there. Main event for the first time in his young career, Joshua Franco from San Antonio. He's 21 years old. That was excellent 2016. As I was talking to him yesterday, briefly at the way, he's like, remember when we met? I'm like, yeah. I was the first guy fighting with nobody in the building. Like, now there's posters of me. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. And he doesn't talk about, like, how does that feel? It's like, that means they believe in me the same way I've always believed in myself. These fighters have that belief system, but now to see it as the main event, that's the reason you work, that's the reason you wake up at five in the morning and you watch your diet. You know, when you look at a bout sheet that we're sent and a lot of media members get, uh, there is a progression, and I think it's very symbolic. The young fighters who fight early in the afternoon or at night, they're on the bottom of it. But as they move their way up, they literally and figuratively go up higher on that bout sheet. And it really is a marker. Jonathan Franco, I believe, according to some of the people and his handlers, they think he could be a 10-round fighter within a fight or two, which means at that point, you become a contender. Listen, he does not have a lot of fights, but I would say below featherweight, 
you move fighters a little bit differently. It's, it's, you look at a lot of the guys in Asia, you know, within eight, nine fights, they're fighting for world titles and are actually very good. I, I don't know if you really do that. Why in, is that over there? You know, because they don't have time to waste. And quite frankly, there's not a lot of flyweights. There's not a lot of straw okay. weights. And the guys that are usually that size are on thoroughbreds. They're not all boxing <laughs> either. I mean, so, so if there's not that much of a deep pool of talent, you kind of get just by sheer, uh, I would say, odds or numbers, you're going to get moved up the ladder. Uh, but here's the issue for Franco. Uh, I believe he's a talented guy. But at 115, here's who some of your world champions are. Some guy by the name of Roman Gonzalez. There's a really good Japanese fighter named Nanu Anui. Then you have Cal Yafai, who just recently won his title. And then Jirwan Ancajas out of the Philippines, who I believe has some talent. Not a lot of easy belts right now at 115. So they, they still have some time to really kind of develop this. John, Joshua Franco, 8-0, four KOs. Let's look at some of his highlights of his young career. And Franco is an action fighter. And one thing's been evident, he's developing a little bit more power, specifically with that left hand. That uppercut's becoming more and more of a weapon. Also, in his last two fights, we have seen him buzz, Beto. So he's not necessarily impenetrable. Punch resistance at a higher level might become an issue. But I get the sense Franco, as he moves up the ladder, is going to be involved in a lot of good back and forth fights as he hones his skill set. This was in his last fight out for Joshua Franco. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim. Steve's work can be read at UCN Live. No longer Max Boxing. That's for the Throwback Thursday pictures. I, I, I used to subscribe <laughs> in college. Did you ever get your T-shirt? I got the oh, shirt. Doug God. brought it to Ooh. me, but I, I framed it. It's up on the wall. And you can check out Steve's podcast every Monday with Mario Lopez. No, no. Well, that's with Gabe Montoya, the Mac Montoya factor. The Montoya factor. The best and, one out there. And, and there's another guy. I do one with the three knockdown rule with some guy named Mario something Lopez. You may have seen him on TV. I right heard he's there. from Chula Vista. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully his uh, house is okay. Yeah. Well, his backyard, it, it, I, boy, I remember it fondly. It's no more, though. No. Yeah, no I saw it in the L.A. Jeez. Times. Also on the news is, uh, you know, it does rain in Southern California. Yeah, Tony, Tony, Tone lied. Yeah, we, we wish you the best, Mario <laughs> Lopez. <laughs> he can afford to rebuild it. He's yeah, fine. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up, main event, Joshua Frank and Victor Pacias. But your, your podcast can be found on iTunes. And also, uh, it is a call-in feature, which is pretty cool. Because some of your callers, Ooh, we, we need to get a screener. We really do. <laughs> We need to get a screener. We do. Yeah, there are some dedicated there, people. There are, though, yeah. And also go and check out Doug Fisher's, Doug Fisher's mailbag every Friday and Monday. Read his mailbag today. The fans are still fired up over what we saw last weekend. Four excellent fights. Leo Santa Cruz gets his belt back. Mikey Garcia with a crazy knockout of the third. Bandido Vargas loses his belt in Indio. And then Takashi Mira, I haven't even brought him up Ooh. yet. And that was a great fight against uh, Big Beto. Didn't you think after six rounds that fight could have gone either way? Yep. I thought Mickey yeah. Roman was on his way, the fighter from Ciudad Juarez. Roman actually in attendance tonight. He comes with Joshua Franco's opponent, Victor Pasillas. They work out at the same gym. I saw uh, Mickey Roman, who was stopped in the 12th round, and his face didn't look like yeah. he was in a brawl yeah, last and, week. And the WBC has mandated that Takashi Mura, since he won, would now have to face Miguel Burkelt. And I, and I think that would be an outstanding battle. And I think 130 is stacked with guys like Orlando Salido, Gervonta Tank Davis, and also a certain guy by the name of Vasil Lomachenko, who probably is the class of them all. But a very, very deep division. I believe Lomachenko looks like he might be fighting the belt holder out of the East Coast, Jason Sosa. And I think that's a pretty good matchup. Sosa, the, the Puerto Rican? Uh, Sosa is a Puerto but Rican. Out of Jersey, right? Yes, out of Jersey. Oh, really? Yes, it's a pretty good fight. And I got to give Leo Santa Cruz credit. I did not think he could be versatile enough or had the wherewithal to make the adjustments to corral and control Carl Frampton. But from the very onset of that fight, Beto, his jab lassoed Frampton, controlled him from the outside, and I thought he clearly won that fight. Frampton, they're talking about a trilogy with those guys. Maybe in Belfast. Yeah. I, I don't but they don't necessarily have to fight each other again, right? No, they don't. You know, I, let, people, let me, let me, okay, did the Barrera one, did they no, go back to back to back? No, and that's what I was going to bring up. Barrera and Morales, who I believe is one of the historic rivalries in boxing. Look at the timeline. They fought in 2000, fought in 2002, 
They fought in 2004 and had a lot of fights in between. So there, there's two ways to do it, but also if you have guys that are very vulnerable, who are just built for each other and you don't want to diminish the value of the fight by losing, Gaddy and Ward fought consecutively three times, yeah. I believe within a 12-month stretch. So there, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I think there's enough good fighters at 126 from Gary Russell, Oscar Valdez, Joseph Diaz. Uh, I, I would hope in 2017 that the sport of boxing, uh, do we need to bring in Jim Brown to call in another truce? <laughs> you get, get the Bloods and the Crips to work with each other, but let, let's make some fights here. That 126-pound division loaded, 130. Yes loaded yep. it is a good time to be there if you're on that level because some big time fights are going to be made got the grand steve kim filling in for you send us your tweets first fight of the night david mihadis from santa monica oh i was in the ring he opened up the la fight club february edition at the Blasco theater Let's look at some of the highlights from his fight. Yeah, and you know, he, this is what he is. He's a guy that's, that's not a big puncher. I don't think he has really heavy hands, but he's going to have to be a real craftsman in the ring. And most of his success came as he was able to close the gap from the mid-range and really smother Avinci Dixon, who's a bigger guy, but who's never really able to get off till the very, very end. But we saw some of the downfall of what could happen to Mahars at a higher level against guys who are going to be able to initiate more of the offense and get going against him. And for the first time, Mahares tasted his own blood, which he had not done previously. This became a real struggle, and Beto, I think me and you are both in agreement, that easily that could have been ruled a knockdown. Everybody on Twitter ruled that one a knockdown. Uh, David Mahares on stage undefeated. And then you see uh, Joe Martinez, our ring announcer, Rolando Ariano former manager to everybody? Well, best known, and I, I remember this about 25 years ago, and yeah, I am dating myself. He was a young, fiery manager for Fernando Vargas. Time flies, time flies. Time flies indeed, and they should know that the camera is always on them. Don't turn your back there. You don't want to show the ball spot there, Rolando. <laughs> yes, I said it. And we're waiting for the Joshua Franco, Victor Pacias to make their ring walk. And there you see, all right, if you're looking at the Golden Boy sign on the screen, right below them, all the people standing there, that is standing room only. So if you go to the Belasco, first come, first serve, boom, right there. That ticket gets you standing room only. Where else are you going to get that? A great environment to go and check it out. There is a balcony right above them, but you want to be right next to the bar. Back to one other note, speaking of Golden Boy, May 6th, we talked about it earlier at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Canelo Alvarez taking on Chavez. People have been asking me about the undercard. I believe it's pretty much been decided that the machine, Lucas Martin Matisse, will be making his return to the ring on that card. And Matisse now training with the Diaz brothers in yes. Coachella. The Saw him in India. And here we go. We got a fighter in the ring. Here we go. Let's fill more fight. <laughs> Victor Pasillas, thank you for going into the ring right now. The fighter from Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. Theater de Los Angeles, California, damas y caballeros, este es la pelea estelar de la noche. Ocho asaltos en el peso, super mosca. And here we go, fine fans, with the main event tonight. Eight rounds of boxing, this in the super flyweight division. Presentada por Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions y patrocinado por Tecate. Born 
Mo y Casa México Tequila. It's in the taste. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Rudy Barragán, Max Deluca, and David Mendoza. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action and cargando the ring, a referee, Raul Caiz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Los Angeles, make some noise if you are ready! Presentando primero la esquina azul, con los pantalones y plateado con rojo y un peso de 113 libras y tres cuartos. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing silver, trimmed in red, he weighed in officially 113 and three quarter pounds. Un veterano con ocho victorias, seis derrotas, dos empates y cinco ganadas por knockout. His professional record in 16 bouts, eight victories, six defeats, two draws and five wins by way of knockout. Desde Ciudad Juárez, Chihuahua, Mexico, presentando The Dragon, Victor Pacías. Y sobre de la esquina roja, con los pantalones y torrado, con verde y un peso de 114 libras y un medias. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wears green and gold. He weighed it officially 114 and one half pounds. Con un record perfecto de ocho victorias, cero derrotas y cuatro ganadas por knockout. His professional record stands perfect with eight victories. No defeats, four wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de San Antonio, Texas, here is the undefeated Joshua, el profesor. Ok muchachos, ya les di las instrucciones allá abajo, los dos traen el calzón muy alto, golpes aquí están perfectamente bien, cuidado con las cabezas y los golpes acá atrás no se, va, no se valen, dense la mano y buena suerte a los dos. Hijo, así es. Raúl Caí Sr., el tercer hombre en el ring de hoy. Ready to go with our main event, Joshua Franco, Victor Pacias from the Belasco Theater in downtown Mendoza, Los ready? Angeles. Franco, a perfect 8 0, 4 KOs. He's got the green trim trunks, red and white, and Victor Pacias, 8, 6, and 2. Pacias hasn't fought since 2015. He took all last year off. Why? He said, because I didn't want to fight. <laughs> about as honest a reply yeah. I think you, as you're going to get to that particular question. He said, I would get fights on two, uh, 10 days notice. No, I wasn't ready for it. He was, I, I used to do that younger days. Now I need to actually have a camp. He's 28 years old. He's, I need to be smarter about my career. There's no need to fight for chunk change, as he said it, money. And there he is. He said he had a month and a half notice to take on Joshua Franco. He said he always stays in the gym in Ciudad Juarez, so he's ready to go. Franco, 21 years old, big time amateur out of San Antonio, Texas, now living and training in Riverside, California. Robert Garcia, Boxing Academy. Part of that crew with he and Jonathan Navarro, who got the victory tonight. Hector Tanahata. Franco, the older brother of Bam Rodriguez, 17 year old, will be turning pro in a couple of weeks. His father, Jesse Rodriguez, in his corner, along with Robert Garcia. Hundred and fifteen pounders. The professor is his nickname. The first day he showed up to Riverside, he had a nice little cardigan sweater, little glasses that he wears. So this kid doesn't look like a fighter. He looks more like a college professor. Name is stuck because that's, you know, any good nickname they just give it to you. You don't give it to yes. yourself. And the last fighter known as the professor was the great Azuma Nelson. That's right. One of the great fighters from Accra, Ghana. Hall of Famer. He has a great force. Oh. Victor Dragon Pasillas, Dragon Dragon, given to him by a trainer when he was a young fighter in Juarez. He just came out breathing fire like a dragon. Name stuck with him. And you know, Mexican trainers, they'll give you a, they don't know your name, they'll just give you a nickname. <laughs> a quick left hook by Franco. 
Franco having a nice first round, just controlling distance, kind of touching the high guard of Macias, kind of gauging where he's at right now. What he's done here in the first round, I think, is a really good example of what they call ring generalship. Curling that right hand. Uh, one thing I noticed about Macias defensively, his front hand, his left hand, he has it abnormally high. So it's going to be hard to really hit him with a straight right hand. You're going to have to kind of curl that right hand over the top and around the corner. Cesar Diez, Esquina Roja. You see Victor Macias. Those are the hands of Mickey Roman. He also had LA legend. By legend, I mean, he's had every single fight you can think of, whether it's a club show, pay-per-view. Jesus Soto Carrasco. Oh. Carrasco never walked in with a favorite, huh? He just always walks in with the visiting corner. Yeah, he doesn't matter. He is a, a fighter for the people, of the people, <laughs> by the people. And, and my understanding is his last fight with Common Guy, where he kind of announced his retirement, I, I think he may have changed his mind, which honestly really? does not surprise me. But we'll see. Well, remember, uh, the last time we were in Velasco, it was a fighter who came from Mexico, first time in the United States. The kid had just a trainer, and he ended up having Soto Carras in his corner. After the weigh-in, Soto Carras gave him a tour of L.A. and took him to dinner. I mean, what more do you need for the guy? He's a, he's a prince. Not a king, but he's a prince. And here's action from round number one. A good, solid one for Franco. He's able to set the pace and box effectively against Pasillas. Sixth time that Joshua Franco has fought at the Belasco Theater. It's a place where Golden Boy is developing their young talent in front of people instead of just 30 people at a venue at 3 in the afternoon. A little different vibe, though, when you're there and people are yelling and chilling people well, drinking the beers. I don't think there's any doubt. I don't know what the difference is. When you're fighting at, they say, 4.30 in the afternoon and there's nobody there but the commission and the janitor, I think there might be more tension in gym sessions yeah. in the middle of an afternoon at times. Good left hook to the body yeah. by Franco. You can see one thing I've noticed about Franco the last couple of fights, he's done, I think he's really starting to sharpen up that left hook. Well, that left hook is what knocked out Mar Juan Bryant. Bazan, yeah. Bazan, and uh, the other card of... Canelo and Liam Smith, Canelo, I believe. Liam Smith, and yeah, Jerry's world. And yeah. And I thought that was an eye-opening performance because I thought it was the first time, in my view, he really showed a certain ability to explode, to really press that gas pedal and change speeds and intensity. Franco with the green trim trunks. Mitchell from San Antonio, Texas. One of the things he's noticed is that he's getting stronger at the age of 21. At one point, he sparred with Carlos Quadras. Also, Granovich, Abner Mars, he's sparred with in his career. Guys that have gone with Robert Garcia. That's what you were mentioning about uh, the work. The work that you get down there. You know, there's that old saying, iron sharpens iron. You mentioned Carlos Quadras will be returning March 18th on the Golovkin Jacobs undercard. He gave Roman Gonzalez an absolute yep. scare on September 10th at the form. It was a very heated 12-round fight. And should Franco develop into a true contender, eventually he will be facing guys like Quadras. At 115 pounds, he started boxing into 13, and the good uppercut landed by Joshua Franco. He's going for that overhand right. Bon Maria watching. Good friend Luis Carrasco back home. You know, the, la the last two fights, Beto, we've seen Franco get hit with counter punches that have stunned him. Uh, in this fight, it's pretty obvious that in, in the gym and just maybe even psychologically, Franco has made a concerted effort. When he's throwing punches, bring your hands back in proper defensive positioning real quickly. Be cognizant of the fact that something might be coming back at you. Yes, esquina roja, Cesar. Hey, what's going on? 
We need to hit him. When you're inside, hit him. And we see the left hook. You can see Franco really digging on that front foot, putting a lot of weight on top of his left foot and just twisting and turning. The left, which he also turns into an uppercut at times, is becoming a real solid weapon for Franco. You hear the corner of Pussy is telling him, you got to throw. And it's Franco that comes out a little bit aggressive. You know, usually that's the most simplistic of ring uh, instructions. On the opposite end, and once again, Franco again digging with that left hook. Robert Garcia, I think, likes the way things are going. He's saying, keep doing what you're doing. Be steady, be consistent. And I really like what Franco has shown. Real technical command here throughout the first two rounds and 30 seconds. That's what he's doing as he's progressing in his young career. Learning to be patient. One of the things that is that his patience has always been there, but listening to Robert is a different story. Getting there, being methodical. And also, for this night, he feels honored that Golden Boy would make him the main event. I'm like, you put extra pressure on that? No, not extra pressure, but I do want to perform yeah. and be impressive. I want to do it again. And as I mentioned before, Golden Boy matchmaker Robert Diaz told me earlier this week that they believe within a fight or two he will be a 10-rounder, which signals to me that they are going to move relatively quickly with this young man. Victor Pasillas, favorite fighter growing up. You like this one, Steve. From Mexicali. Not Tony Margarito. Model metal. Pie. Oh, one of the true sports, one of the real, real, I think, showmen of the 80s and 90s. Said Pies was his favorite guy. He loved the style. He's like, that's not my style to show up like that, but I just loved the style. I still remember Pies being involved in one of the last 15 round fights in boxing history. It was on Tuesday night fight from Mexicali. It was about 115 degrees against Calvin Grove. We had to score, I believe, three knockdowns in the last round to pull out a thrilling victory. Mexicali, home of Diego de la Hoya, also home of Las Aguilas de Mexicali, who played in the Serie de Caribe. Playing against Venezuela right now. So we're watching Victor Pasillas, Joshua Franco. Pasillas said he started boxing at the age of 13 because it was the only sport in the area he was growing up where it was free. All you have to do is walk in, <laughs> sign up, and it was free. You know, can I tell you about that? There's not a lot of things where people pay to get punched. No. Let's be honest. <laughs> he said soccer had to pay. Baseball had to pay. Basketball, I was short. Boxing was free. And it gave me a chance to learn how to defend myself. Oh, good luck. That hook. got him. That stung him. And he went down here. And it is over. Oh, it has been stopped. Third round. And Kai Sr., the referee, is asking for the doctor immediately. Beto, I thought that's an interesting call given the fact it was the first knockdown relatively early in the fight. I would, per, again, I'm not in there. I would have given the mandatory eight. That's what it's there for. But we spoke about this before. Franco's left hook is becoming a weapon. He's doing a better job of turning it over, getting it across his elbow, and hitting on the sweet spot. Uh, you're seeing a young fighter literally grow in front of our eyes. Joshua Franco improves a 9-0, his fifth stoppage. Wow, that was kind of a stunning end. Uh, yeah. It, it didn't seem to me like it was foreshadowing a one-punch knockout. And if you look at Franco's record coming in, eight fights, four knockouts, 50% percentage. But again, that left hand, he was really, really working on it at the gym, you could tell. Uh, I, I get the sense they're not hitting pool noodles at the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. <laughs> And you could literally see Pasillas' legs go out from under him, and it was a quick wave off uh, by a veteran referee that's certainly been around the block. The Royal Cahiz Sr. has been all over the world referee in fights, so he stops out there with him. Let's look at the replay here. Wow. That, that was just a snapping left hook, and then there's a kind of a cleanup shot, and... I do think it was not the left hook that sent him down, but I think it was the left hook that stunned him, and he seemed to go rocking back on his heels. 
and in the two, three punches that followed it, subsequently finished the fight. Yeah, Caiz immediately jumped in and ended the fight. No eight count at yeah. all. Mm. Younger fighters, maybe yeah. you, you don't get the leeway. But regardless, Joshua Franco landed some vicious shots to end the fight. The professor took his opponent to school. I thought that was a strong all-around performance, Beto, by Franco, even putting aside the exclamation point. Leading into it, I thought he looked very, very technically proficient. Seemed to be boxing with a lot of yeah. confidence, and what we saw the last couple of fights was him get hurt once or twice. Uh, he did not put himself in harm's way. I thought he was very responsible, both offensively and defensively tonight, and then he was able to finish with the flourish. A flourish, power, in uh, Riverside, the RGBA, Pita Fitness takes them to the hill. They've run the Santa Monica Stairs. They're all over anywhere they can to get the fitness. You're talking about the condition with Jonathan Navarro. It's not something you have to worry about. One thing also, Steve, you will never, ever see at the Garcia Boxing Academy, according to Pita, pool noodles. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, Pita, he, 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 he said this to me on Twitter. Uh, Steve, we don't even own pool noodles. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I just like saying pool noodles. <laughs> you know those sticks? You know those foam sticks? I hate those things. Oh! I've always said about pool noodles, if you use them in the gym, if a boxer drowns, throw them to him. Don't have to train <laughs> with them. That's just my opinion, though. You're the one who told me, if you're going to go to the boxing gym, go to the heavy bag, stand there. Yeah and work. Yeah, a lot of shadow boxing. A lot, a lot of, of shadow things. boxing. It really does come back to the basics. But Steve, come on, hitting the water bag on your toes in just 35 times in 20 no, seconds. It's great. It's great for synchronized boxing. If that ever became an Olympic sport, um, there'd be a lot of good ones. Steve, it's great for <laughs> these boxers that are Instagram all-stars. <laughs> like, you got a fight coming up? Yeah, when? I, 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 you know, my manager. Who's your manager? Oh, you know. <laughs> Until you get in there, it's easy to talk, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Joshua Franco with a knockout. Joe Martinez waiting on the particulars. There you see the Belasco Theater. They'll be back at the Belasco February 17th. You'll see there. And then after that, Chimpa Gonzalez on March 10th. And let's look at the recap of the entire fight that went three rounds. And from the very onset, it was Joshua Franco who was in command, really showing a certain control of the ring, also cleaner technique, and, and you can see again, that left hook has become a real weapon for that young man from San Antonio. The referee for the fight for the ganador for no count. The end comes officially two minutes, 32 seconds. Round number three, your winner by KO. He is still undefeated. Joshua, El Profesor Franco. Yeah, the professor, everybody back in San Antonio happy. There's a Robert Garcia Boxing Academy San Antonio edition run by the Donahata down there. They have 20 kids at the amateurs uh, right now. Five of them going to Kansas City for the silver gloves. Congratulations to them. And then, you know, when you're what knockout like that? The Spanish announcer comes in and just attacks you. But don't worry, we yeah. won't attack you with pool noodles. You know, I think tonight the professor gets an A. That, that was a solid performance. And I've said this many times, it's a mantra of mine. It's not if you win, how you win. And tonight, I think, showed a lot of control. And then he puts the exclamation point at the end. But I think we are seeing a fighter develop very, very well under the tutelage of Robert Garcia and company. First time he's a main event fighter. You said he wanted to put on a show. So everybody all over the United States and in the world in Colombia watching. Ryan in Got Canada it. saw you. it. Professor with a KO. He's now 9-0. His fifth stoppage. And he switched yeah. easily. Line is with the good line. The professor closer to tenure. Mm. You know, as Ricky, Hender oh. as Ricky Henderson once said, I don't have tenure. I got 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's uh, a name as a boxer. Oh, the punching professor. Coming up, bonus coverage. David Mahadas and Avicii Dixon were at it earlier this evening. That's coming your way on Ring TV.
Entonces, ¿ya me paro o qué onda? Pues ya tiro la pausa aquí. debut for Golden Boy Promotions as they start another year. A super lightweight battle, six rounds of action. It was David Mahares. He is the southpaw taking on Vinci Dixon. Mahares came in with a record of four and zero, three stoppages. Weighed in at this fight for 138.8 fights, while Dixon, a 25-year-old from Lancaster, PA, he also weighed in below 140 pounds. Junebug Mahades, whose last bout was October 7th here at the same venue at the Velasco Theater against Jason Gavino, scoring a first round knockout. He is crowding Dixon, and this was st the story of the night for the most part. This is where he had most of his success backing up Dixon along the ropes and really chipping away with short body shots, working with both hands. Round number one, it's been a productive one for Mahadez, who gets off to a good start against Avinci Dixon. His record again, 17-5 and two on his ledger are 10 undefeated fighters. So we can certainly say that he is a well-traveled, well-seasoned veteran. 10 seconds to go, David Mihadis, Avinci Dixon shaping up to be a good one. That was the first. David Mihada is 4-0, 3 KO, Santa Monica. He's the southpaw. Vinci Dixon, 7-15 and 2. Two KOs in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Have gloves, will travel. And Beto, I thought early on, Mahadas' movement and his mobility, the lateral movement, really offset some of the physical advantage that Dixon had. But uh, I thought Dixon throughout this night didn't take advantage of the fact he's the taller, longer guy, and he really placed himself in a position where he allowed Mahadas to dictate the tempo, start off the action, and he never really got going till it was really much too late. 
Mihad is working in. Went to Santa Monica High School. Was in the band with Mihadis. So they're taking it seriously when he was out of high school. They sparred in a wild card. Sparred with Victor Postal. Got some work as Postal was getting ready for a fight. In fact, Postal at that point in the summer, he faced Terrence Crawford on July 23rd in what was a unification bout uh, at 140. As we know, Crawford, a natural right-hander, spent a lot more of his time now in the ring, I've noticed, as a southpaw, which, which really brought in, which hastened the arrival of David Mahadis to his camp. Halfway through the second round, schedule for six. David Mihadis, 4-0, three KOs. 21 years old, also lives in Pasadena. Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. First Friday of every month, it's the LA Fight Club. A minute to go in the second round. You know, Beto, we mentioned this earlier, despite three knockouts in his four, four professional outings, you get the sense this is what Mahadas is. He's a guy that's going to have to really chip away. He's going to pick, and he's going to kind of probe. But I, I don't see him really hitting through anybody as he moves up the ladder. Does not have what I would call naturally heavy hands. At the 140-pound division, he would be one of the shorter fighters yeah. in that division. have to be very, very clever in there. He's going to have to be very, very crafty. He's going to have to find a, a spot where he finds safety. Like, in this particular fight, I, I thought he was much better off being chest-to-chest -chest with Dixon than he was on the outside when he ran into some problems. But he is a pretty good craftsman. He, he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. And I, I think sometimes with that lack of power, you're better off being in close and really smothering your opponent than you are out in the space. David Mahadev, who's 21 years old, hailing from nearby Santa Monica. He's going to have to be an activity volume fighter. Uh, I don't see him stopping a lot of guys with one shot. And, and tonight, uh, eventually, David Mahadev, this guy, this, does not have a great record. 2 11 and 1 in his last 14. Overall record of 7 15 and 2. But he was able to get some good work. Quite frankly, I thought at the end, started to see some of the deficiencies that young Dave is going to have to really work on every day in the gym. Bad behind his own corner for young June Bug. Me hide as June Bug means junior. The su southern area, his dad from Louisiana. It's a nickname for him. Trained by his dad, David Mihadis Sr. <laughs> Mihadis has his pro debut on the Kodo Canelo card. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the Amir Khan Co Canelo card at the brand new T Mobile Arena. So, a bit of trivia the first ever yes. sporting event at the T Mobile Arena? That would be. David Mihadis. I remember that night. It still had that new venue smell. Yep. And in fact, uh, Golden Boy will be going back there May 6th. It was announced today that the Mexican Civil War between Julio Cesar Chavez and Canelo Alvarez will take place at that very same building. Culiacan versus Guadalajara. That'll be a great week of action. You know, Golden Boy doesn't just do the fight the day of. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Getting there Tuesday. And all week long, there'll be all kinds of activities at the MGM. Get your ticket of permission will be coming out soon. There's going to be a pretty cool press tour involving pushing it. I don't think you need to sell that one because Mexicans, Cinco de Mayo, and then two great Mexicans oh. going at it. The Takati is going to be flowing like the Nile. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And the, the Guinness for Dirk Fisher. <laughs> that little lounge at the MGM is going to be fire. Good luck getting a seat there. That's David Mihadis. He's fun in Vegas. He's now at the Belasco Theater, grinding his way against his most experienced opponent, Avinci Dixon. 
who's fought from 140 pounds to 150 pounds. You know, and eventually Dixon, uh, again, putting aside the record, he did come in with some momentum. I was there at the Galen Center on the campus of USC December 10th. He held Adon Morris, who, yes, is the brother of Abner Morris, to a draw. A lot of observers will tell you, putting everything aside, the politics and the promotional alliances and who's the house fighter, that Dixon may have won that fight. Ended up being a draw in four rounds. But Dixon has been a fighter who he starts slow and then all of a sudden gets a little confidence in you. And then what? Well, th on this particular night, and this was our first bout of the night here from the Belasco Theater, I thought he started off very slow and started to build a little momentum. And by the end of it, you began to wonder what happens if this is an eight-round fight. But at the same time, David Maharis is a six-round fighter, and we see why. But Maharis is going to be a guy. Conditioning and tempo are going to be everything, and, and they're going to work together because he's going to have to work in volume just like he's doing here, and he's not going to blow anyone away physically. I, I don't see a lot of physical strength. I'm not saying that he's feeble, but uh, most of his punches are going to be the variety where they're going to touch you, but they're not necessarily going to really back you up. And we see some of the replays here from the previous action. There's an overhand right. And Maharas, I thought early on, did a very good job on the inside of making sure that his head was never like a tee ball. It was never just a stationary target, moving it on both sides of the shoulders of his opponent, staying off the center point on a consistent basis. And, and these are the things he's going to have to be really, really good at uh, as he begins to face solid, tougher opposition. David Mihad is a Vinci Dixon. Mihad is in the silver trunks. Is the southpaw. Looking at his record and looking at Vinci Dixon. You know, Brenda Barbosa sentences all the information, the bios, the fight facts, and go over that, pour it through, and so much information. You look at a fighter like Dixon, has fought, Steve, you were saying this. He's traveled, he's seasoned, fought in New York. Fought in Connecticut. He's fought in Pennsylvania. Fought in Texas. Now fought in California. He's one of those seizing guys that some matchmakers, some managers might say, you know what, I don't want to put my guy up against them. You know, and you better be very careful how many rounds you actually make the fights. Because, again, as I mentioned just a short time ago, uh, by the end of the night or the end of the six rounds, Dixon started to figure things out, and Maharas ran out of ideas. And, again, he's still very young in this process. But I'll repeat myself. Eventually, Dixon, on his record, 10 undefeated guys. So he's not going to be intimidated by much at this stage. Mihad is in the silver, 21 years old, in front of a packed Belasco Theater crowd. Standing room only seats right or section right there. And we'll be back there the 17th. Yes. As Tito Manzanares makes his U.S. debut for Golden Boy Fighters. Been fighting out of Mexico in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. And then March 10th, Chimpa Gonzalez is in the mix. Then March 23rd, Jason Quigley, Glenn Tapia. That is the first fight between those two. And it'll also be the first time that Golden Boy and ESPN have hooked up their first fight of the year. Great adventure, great venture between the two companies for the fight fans. And we want to note to our audience, Beto, and this is certainly beyond our control, uh, Hector Tanahara was scheduled to be on this card. I was certainly looking forward to his development. His opponent came in overweight by only seven pounds, so that, that thing got kiboshed. Yeah, by only. Only. He, but he did lose three. <laughs> he did lose three. And Tanahara and also Edgar Valerio was scheduled, but got sick this week. Doctors held him out, unable to fight on the card. So Joel De La Hoya, his manager will find him a new date. Us will Robert Garcia for his fighter, Hector Tanahara. What, what do they say? Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the time in this sport. No, 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 no. no, no. And that's the kind of wisdom that you can hear in Steve Kim's <laughs> podcast. He's got two of them. And then you also hear a lot of uh, John Woodenisms. <laughs> 
Hey, never mistake activity for achievement, Beto. Just remember that. Well, be quick, but don't <laughs> hurt. You know, if, if Angie Dixon had this fight to do over again, I wonder, would he try to, like, plant himself in the center of the ring and come downhill, be first, and be first with that long jab of his? Um, as you'll see later in this fight, things got a little bit interesting for Mahatis. And you see some of the good work up by Mahatis. Mahatis has the ability, as they say, to kind of hit on the fly and shift and twist and pivot. Fifth round, scheduled for six, David Mihadis and Avinci Dixon. Mihadis in the silver trunks. He's 4 0 in his young career. Wasn't a fighter that had like a, a lot of big time amateur fights. He went to some of the tournaments. Good amateur background, though. No, you could tell. Mihadis is well schooled. Technically, he's very, very solid. That's the way I would describe him. The question that I have is he's going to start facing better guys who aren't 7, 15, and 2. How is he going to be able to deal with better offensive fighters without the ability to really back them up with his own punching power? There you see Dixon on the ropes. Not many punches thrown from Dixon, but when he has no. decided to let his hands go a bit, he's connected. Well, this is what I call the layaway attack. <laughs> Early on, he put his punches on layaway, and that was an issue. You better go collect them. <laughs> Remember layaway? I'm old enough to do. I did a lot of layaway. I've heard about it. <laughs> I've heard about it. <laughs> Mihad is trying to dig into the body. Good uppercut landed by Junebug Mihad is. I think Marhar is at his best has to be perpetual motion whether he's on the outside or the inside yeah uh, he's gonna have to have a lot of movement of his head his shoulders really get his hands moving change distances change angles when you don't have great punching power or that one overall skill that stands out you then have to be well rounded to make up for it Thank you for watching this fight between David Mihadis and Vinci Dixon. We're good night of boxing for Golden Boy Promotions from the Belasco Theater. Yes, Steve Kim is witty witty right now. He's very witty. <laughs> That's why he has a two podcasts. Well, and then you see a Vinci Dixon land in his hand. Well, you know, happy hour was just a few minutes ago. So. Yeah. Somewhere, <laughs> sometime. And Vinci Dixon looked like he's a fighter who didn't want to be in there in the first couple rounds then got hit and like woke up like you know what i can hang yeah. with this young fighter mihadis and beto we mentioned this earlier this is the first time and, and this is a bit of a milestone moment that i think every fighter goes to it's the first time David Mahadis was really marked up, and you see blood coming out of his nose. Uh, I guess you could kind of say it is the first moment of adversity that he has faced in his professional career. And... David Mihadis went on to win. For time constraints, we had to dump out of that last round. Mihadis actually went down in the six. It was ruled yep. a slip, but he got the victory. He improves a 5-0 and oh for young David Mihadis. You see my man Andy working right there for the Ring TV camera, giving you the good shots. They're breaking down the ring. Cuñado, Art, and the crew getting it done. Velasco Theater is done tonight. I saw David Mihadis with the win.
Jonathan Thunder Navarro with the win. The one and only Mr. Victor Brother, he is Ryan Garcia with the victory. Go read his article on UCN Live to see why we're calling Mr. Victorville. And uh, he got a good win over Devin Jones with the early stoppage. Good night for the Golden Boy Fighters, the first broadcast from the Velasco Theater in the month of February. We'll be back March, uh, February 17th. And there you see the first fighter from Robert Garcia Boxing Academy, Jonathan Navarro. He went the distance. He improved and he worked hard against Angel Rodriguez, a tough veteran who gave him his all good workmanlike experience. And Navarro improves to 8 and 0. Oh, obviously, no pool noodles being used <laughs> in Riverside for the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. He had good work with Angel Rodriguez, a 35 year old from Houston, Texas. And then in the main event tonight, his stablemate, Jonathan Franco. Look good. He was taking on veteran Victor Pasillas. Pasillas, 8, 6, and 2. Coming in. Franco, there you see him from San Antonio, Texas. Came in undefeated, 8 and 0, 4 KOs. But he got the victory. He knocked out Pasillas in the third. The professor from San Antonio, Texas, goes home with the victory. For everybody involved at Golden Boy Media and Entertainment, David Tetro will write. I'm Bethel Duran for my partner, Steve Kim, saying good night from downtown.